All right. <laughs> Call to order. Good evening. The Annapolis City Council's Public Safety Standing Committee meeting is now called to order. It is Monday, April the 2nd, 2018, and the time is 6.09 p.m. Roll call. Alderman Fred Payon, Ward 2. Here. Alderwoman Shanika Henson, Ward 6. Not here. Alderwoman Rhonda Pendell Charles, Ward 3. Here. Business before this committee, approval of the minutes. At this time, I would entertain a motion that we approve the minutes from our last committee meeting, which was held on Monday, March 5th, 2018. So moved, Madam Chair. Seconded. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? The ayes have it, so approved. The agenda. The first item on our agenda is approval of minutes. Update, ID number 83-18, our update from the Annapolis Fire Department from Acting Chief Romali. Good evening. Good evening. Good to see you, Acting Chief Romali. Deputy Chief Douglas Romali, Acting Fire Chief. With me is Deputy Chief Simmons, Director of Emergency Management. Good to see you both. During the uh, last public safety meeting, it was mentioned that you would like to start seeing some quarterly updates, so we thought we'd be the first to give you a quarterly update. Oh, you're going to get your brownie points in today. Chief Simmons, because... Uh, I'm waiting on, on Deputy Herman over there. His organization does so much, I think he's going to do it to this next meeting so that we could separate it a little bit. Okay. But what we did is we figured we'd just give you a little bit of highlights. Obviously, we feel that there's a lot of things that go on within the department, but if I give you too much information, it's not going to be read so just uh, a little bit of the highlights uh, for the first three months of the year we've run over 3,000 emergency calls here's your breakdowns on there uh, 1,800 of them were EMS calls emergency medical service calls 900 were fire related then the rest are service rescue calls and hazmat calls are lumped in there uh, out of the 1,800 EMS calls that we had we transported 1,169 people to the hospital 13 of those patients were actually in cardiac arrest when we arrived to them, which means they were not breathing, the hearts were not beating. Uh, we were able to <coughs> successfully resuscitate three of them before arrival at the emergency center. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, the next statistic there is not a real good one. It's not um, a nice one to say, but in the first three months of the year, our units responded to 70 overdoses. Three of those were fatal. Mm -hmm. uh, with that, the safe stations is, is just clear, and I'm going to just highlight some of these. The safe stations is our substance abuse program that we have where anybody can come, no questions asked, to either fire station or police station, and ask for help for substance abuse, which includes alcohol. Also, uh, within the city of Annapolis alone, in the first three months of the year, we handled 20, 21 safe station calls. That's great. And that's the call that we partner with the county and uh, the crisis mobile um, people. Uh, there's just some statistics there on EMS billing, what we brought in for the first three months of the year. That will fluctuate as additional billing comes in for transports that we did, but we just okay. thought we would highlight that for you, uh, right. for what the EMS program is doing there. Uh, everybody asked questions about the fire and explosive services unit, so we added a little bit of highlights to those about the bomb threats that they're running, suspicious package calls, and investigations that they're involved in, so that's your next area there. There was a request about grants update. So the first one's the SAFER grant. That is the grant where we received 12 firefighters to help staff the EMS unit in the ladder truck at the Eastport Station. It was a two-year grant where it covered salaries. We are in the second year of that grant. So we hired the 12 personnel. They are in the field at this time. So we are in the second year of that, which ends in January 2019. The MIMS grant is the active assailant grant that we have to purchase more years for our active shooting or active assailants. So we're working with the police department for our rescue task force. Chief Simmons is setting up some training for all the agencies involved, and that's just more equipment there. The MIMS grant is, uh, that one was 100% grant, which gave us more supplies. Uh, the grant underneath of it is for ALS training. So when we send people to paramedic school, paramedic research training, the state actually gives us some of that money back, so that money is going back into our account, and that's what the MIMS training grant is. And also, we've applied for and successfully got the MIMS 
a 50-50 match for AEDs. As you know, there's AEDs in the buildings. We carry those on our fire apparatus. Their cardiac monitors cost about $30,000. So this is a grant that will allow us to replace some of the AEDs. There is money in our budget for the second half of that grant. And the third one is our partners, the Annapolis Police Department, were successful in getting us a small grant for some ballistic vests. These vests are a lower grade vest. They're not the same as the ballistic vest for active assailant, but these vests will be in the stations where the medics can take them out and the medics can wear them when they have a scene that is unsecure and they feel that they should have that protective equipment. So the police department, we thank them for that. They assisted us in getting that grant. The capital projects, we, uh, this year we were able to put a new paramedic unit in service at the Taylor Avenue Fire Station. That unit went in service in January. That's a Horton paramedic unit. Uh, our medics get a lot of mileage on the units. They're running a lot of calls, as you can see with the statistics we gave you. So we're, we're happy to have that unit in service. And then we actually, this year, through the capital projects, we're able to get a new fire engine, which will replace a 20-year-old fire engine. That unit is in production now and should be here by June. Uh, the next one on there is just a robot for the explosive services unit. This is going to replace their, one of their smaller robots. They were able to get this federal grant with the assistance of the UASI and Chief Simmons. Uh, one of the other popular ones is the Eastport Fire Station project. As you know from in the past, our female facilities in the fire stations are not that great. Uh, there was money placed in the budget to update the facilities at the Eastport Station. That project's out there. It's been going on. Originally, we were under the impression it was going to be done before winter time. It has not happened as of this point, but I did talk to Public Works, and they said that it's ready to go out to bid. Okay. So hopefully that will be moving. They do have the drawings for that, that project. Uh, the roof project, Taylor Avenue Fire Station, has been leaking for about 10 years now. That project's getting ready to go out to bid. Great. I can tell you that uh, Chief Stokes would tell you for the eight years he's been here, the roof's been being repaired. So we're hoping that within this year's budget, it's actually gonna occur. And then Eastport Storage Building, uh, it currently has propane heat in that building. That's the storage building behind the station where the command vehicle is stored and some of the, the gators for special events and that type of stuff. It's, there's a propane tank out back. Well, when BG&E came in and was doing the gas line upgrades in the Eastport area, they were using that field to store the equipment so they ran a gas line to that building. So we're waiting on public works. Once public works gets a meter put in, we'll be able to have natural gas in that be building and the propane tank will be able to go away. Uh, other activities, we have eight new recruits in Anne Arundel County Fire School. Those were eight vacant positions that we lost over the year. We started out with eight. Unfortunately, we have lost one in the academy, but we have six, seven of them there currently. They're scheduled to get out in <coughs> September. Uh, we have a firefighter first class who's now assigned to Chief Simmons, but he's assigned up there full time. So he's mm -hmm. full time with those recruits. While it's the Anne Arundel County's Academy, we have an instructor there with them. They're a major part of that academy. And then the captain, Captain Morris, who's also in the training division, supplements that. Uh, as you probably know, we had a canine that had an ACL tear. It's a very expensive tear. Now, there is money in our budget for canine uh, supplies and also vet care but this bill the, well the surgery would have taken up a majority of that so this Chesapeake Canine Foundation who takes a look at service dogs and working dogs along with somebody in the mayor's office were able to successfully get the surgery and the rehab donated mm -hmm. by uh, veterinary orthopedic and sports medicine it's a very okay. expensive new, uh, ordeal the dog is doing very well they actually came out to the station and did orthopedic rehab at mm -hmm. our station for the dog and then there's another group that's actually uh, giving medication for it so ongoing so the dog is back in service mm -hmm. uh, the Chesapeake Foundation also came up and told us that they had money for a, a new dog that's going to go to one of our investigators in the bomb squad so there'll be an explosive detection canine and they'll be doing that training in June uh, with that we partnered with the volunteers at the independent fire station they purchased an inflatable rigid hull inflatable boat for us that's going to be used for some of our situations with flooding downtown and also out on the Severn River. So with the partnership with them, we were able to get that boat. The boat's assigned to the Taylor Avenue Fire Station. It's a small inflatable on a trailer. You can go right to Tucker Street and put overboard for the water rescues that we run. So it just increased our assets with our Marine Division to go along with the large fire boat and the other inflatable we have on the squad. 
with that, we partnered with the county. As you know, we have a medic unit at the Annapolis Next Station, which is owned by Anne Arundel County, but we provide EMS services out of there. The county dive team is in that station, so we have allowed members of our department to become part of the dive team. Mm -hmm. So we have actual public safety divers assigned to that unit also. And because of the flooding conditions, swift water is always an issue with us with flooding. So we now have members that are currently being trained or actually in a reservoir today up in Howard County somewhere uh, doing swift water training. So if we have cars stuck in the water and people can't get out, that they can take one of the inflatables and go out and get them. So we will have our own swift water capabilities also. Uh, just some of our concerns, we have five employees on extended sick leave or disability leave. And we have two on modified duty that's going to go on for some time so that affects our overtime budget and then as of december this year one of our safer grant positions he is also a military reservist and he's been deployed for one year so we won't see him for quite a while uh, and just some of the major planned activities to go on throughout the year as i talked about earlier a partnership with us in the police department uh, to do some training for the rescue task force uh, we also have a safety campaign that's going to come out and our EMS division our captains also been trained that he can actually through the health department administer or give Narcan to people that need it not necessarily the ones that have already overdosed but people that are high risk so that campaign is going to be out there and then we have our five-year long term planning goals that'll be set so that's just a little highlight of what's been going on over the last three months I know that Chief Stokes talked to you about our concerns about the hospital statuses. Yes. So that next sheet you have there is the first three months of the year. And what I am happy to say, and as you can see on there, and it may be partially because the flu season's winding down, but the alert statuses mm -hmm. have actually decreased over the last three months. And you can see a steady decline. So we hope to keep it um, going in that direction. You're looking at it to keep it under maybe 100? We're, we're hoping to... to well, the reroutes definitely, the mm -hmm. reroutes really hurt us because when they're on reroute, we definitely have to go to another facility. But when they're on red alert, that means you can't, they can't take a cardiac patient and yellow alerts, basically all others. So we're still working diligently with the hospital to do what we can to decrease those amounts. Okay, but great. A lot of people using the medical facilities, mm -hmm. to say the least. Yeah, wonderful. It's a great report. Thank you so much. Alderman Payon, do you have any questions or points of discussion? Okay. Thank you all so very, very, very much. We appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. You Deputy Chief Simmons, ID number 8618, overview of the 2017-18 warming relief program at the Stanton Center Office of Emergency Management. And Ms. Nicole Queen, thank you all so much. Good evening. Good evening. And we do have a handout for you. Yes, sir. Nicole's going to give you a handout. So the... We finished another year with the 2017-2018 Stanton Center Overnight Warm and Relief Program, which is essentially a short-term emergency shelter that operates when the temperatures or combination of precipitation, wind chill, wind, and temperature become dangerously inclement. So um, the 2017-2018 has been the most active that we've had since the inception of the Stanton Center. Why do you think that is? Well, we had a, we had a very, very cold uh, winter, and I think our reputation is kind of preceding us. And um, we get Annapolis indigent and homeless. However, we've had people from Glen Burnie, and this, this uh, is a place where the police officers, when they come across somebody and it's dangerously cold out, they know that they can deliver them to the Stanton Center as well. So we've had a lot of business from that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let Nicole, who actually provides administrative oversight of the program, I'll let her give you an overview, and she gave you a handout, and then we can talk after. So, right. Nicole. <coughs> Thank you, Ms. Queen. I'm just going to um, read verbatim what I've written up for you all. So, um, We Care and Friends Overnight Winter Relief Program has been a staple in Annapolis for the past five years. This program helps shelter individuals throughout the winter season who are in need of this service. The Office of Emergency Management provides administrative oversight of the program. 
The nonprofit We Care and Friends provide trained staff and is responsible for the daily management of the program. Known as the Shelter of Last Resort, the Stanton Center Overnight Relief Program has prevented indigent citizens from succumbing to cold weather exposure injuries. Other partners include the Mayor's Office, Annapolis Police Department, Annapolis Fire Department, and Recreations, Recreation and Parks and Public Works. Throughout these past four months, the shelter has been activated 56 times and sheltered 855 patrons. So I just want to go over the, um, the daily routine okay. that goes on um, when we do activate the overnight winter relief. So um, the primary workers are William Haskins and Charles Tucker, and they're both employed through We Care and Friends. Um, the winter relief workers arrive at the Stanton Center usually around 6.30. Um, when we do activate the overnight warm and shelter, we go from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. Um, Check-in for the shelter use begins at 7 p.m. Individuals go through an extensive intake process where they must sign in and identify if they are Annapolis resident or not. Um, it helps us keep track of who we have in the city coming there. Um, and if you're not from Annapolis, you don't get refused, we don't return you. So we've had people as far as Glen Burnie, Queen Anne's County, Baltimore City, and County. Um, bags and belongings are individually checked for alcohol, drugs, and other contraband. Um, winter relief workers prepare dinner for the shelteries and lights out is at 12 a.m. Um, shelteries are released from the overnight winter relief program at 7 a.m. so the Stanton Center can resume uh, normal business and in, in extreme weather condi conditions, excuse me, shelteries are allowed to stay longer. So I think we had one time in um, January where it was just so cold and it had snowed so we just made accommodations whether we took them on the second floor of the Stanton Center and just let them stay there. And then right below that, um, you'll see the 2017-2018 um, Stanton Center Overnight Woman Relief Stats. I have each month the number of activations and the number of referrals. And then you just see the totals at the bottom. So we ran for about five months, four or five months. We had 56 activations and 855 referrals. And then you can go ahead and flip on the back for me. Um, I do just want to inform you guys of some significant incidents that we had. On December 30th of last year, we had a sheltery who was transported via ambulance to Anne Arundel Medical Center uh, due to chest pains. On January 16th of this year, we had a Queen Anne's County Sheriff. He brought over a mentally ill subject to the Warm and Relief Center all the way over from Queen Anne's County. Um, I heard about um, that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> On February 2nd of this year, we had a shelteree who was found unresponsive in the women's bathroom. Uh, we realized that she had suffered from an overdose. Um, EMS were called and Narcan was administrated and she was eventually transmitted, or excuse me, transported to Anne Arundel Medical Center. And then on March 2nd of this year, we had a shelter become disorderly and belligerent and it eventually led to him being arrested and taken off the property. So one thing that uh, we did this year that was a little bit different than last year was we did some training and some outreach. Um, on January 19th of this year, we had James Maben from the Department of Social Services come over and walk down to the Stanton Center and meet with some individuals to express different types of outreach that they offer at the uh, social services. On the 23rd of January, I went over to the Food Bank of Crownsville and they donated a total of 523 pounds of food. Which they is, are excellent. They are wonderful yes, people over there. They, they are. They're Mr. Very, Bruce very retired, nice. but now it's Ms. Susan and they are great. They, they hooked us up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, they donated, uh, great amount of food, which should last us, I think, till we start again this year. Okay. Um, on the 15th of February, myself and a couple of my counterparts and our two um, workers from the Overnight Warman Relief went to a Narcan training that was held at the health department. And then the city of Annapolis provided a grant of $5,000 to We Care and Friends to help pay for staffing. Okay. So that concludes my report. Great, wonderful.
You all do fantastic work. We are so, and the council, I can speak for the council, are so very proud about fire department, emergency management, as well as our police department, who do a stellar job as always. Uh, first class, first rate. I'll put you all up against anybody. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Alderman Pale. Any questions, discussion? All right. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Next item is our legislation before committee. That would be O1018, Police Advisory Board, for the purpose of establishing the Police Advisory Board, authorizing the powers and duties of the board, and matters generally relating to the Police Advisory Board. We have before us this evening Major Herman, our deputy. Thank you so much for being with us this evening. And as we go along, if we have any questions or discussion, we will do that. Um, are you familiar with the um, amendments that the Rules Committee has? Okay. And in the meantime, I had some questions. And so um, Ms. Green here had, had forwarded the questions regarding these amendments to our city law office, particularly Mr. Rich Melnick, who's our city attorney. And do you have a copy in front of you? Okay. And you can take a look at them. Nothing of great magnitude, but something I think we definitely need to consider and um, respond to. Do you have any preliminary comments or anything you'd like to say about this, Major Herman? Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, let me open up here. We have the legislation. We have the police advisory board, the staff report, the fiscal impact, and the rules and city government proposed amendments. We can take the first amendment, and I'm going to open this up so I can see it better. Uh, the first amendment uh, that has been proposed by the um, Rules and City Government Committee, after the word methods, please add the word to provide reasonable notice to Annapolis residents of a vacancy on the board. And that's before the word including. And let me find that because it's not indicated which line it's on. Hmm. Oh, uh, Major Herman, can you put your microphone on, please? As soon as I find it. for the word methods. Hmm. I don't see it. I'm looking. Looking for the word methods to add these words that I outlined and then the word including. Yeah, I, don't I don't see it. Do you see it, Ms. Green? I don't see it. The amendment as proposed by rules indicates I would rather use the word may instead of shall regarding solicitation of members unless we have arguments that would deem otherwise. Oh, I see where it is. You see it? Alderman Payne? The, the word methods is in the Oh, the okay. The word methods is in the amendment. Okay. Membership shall be solicited through a variety of methods. Okay. And then he adds to provide reasonable notice to Annapolis residents of a vacancy on the board including direct solicitation through community organizations through the use of social media as appropriate. I don't have any problem with that. Okay. Do you have a problem with changing it to may instead of shall? No. Okay. Well, we'll go with may. 
Alderman Payon, could you read that again for me, please? Thank you. I was uh, after the distracted. word method, let's see, mm -hmm. it'd be uh, membership shall, uh, may be solicited through a variety of methods to provide reasonable notice to Annapolis residents of a vacancy on the board, including direct solicitation through community organizations and through the use of social media okay. as appropriate. Okay, and is that a motion? Uh, I move that uh, Amendment 1 be approved as amended. Second? I guess I have to move to amend the amendment. The amendment yes, sir. Which I would do at this time. Okay. Uh, Alderman Payon moves to um, amend the amendment indicated as he just read. That's a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved, so approved. Okay, membership. Maybe. Now I think we have to do the amendment Maybe as amended. Okay. Did you want to take one at a time and then all of them, or you want to do one at a time? Let's do one at a time okay. as long as we keep it moving. That's true. Okay, amendment number one, and I would move that we, hold on one second. I would move that at that time we entertain a motion that we approve this amendment that we give a favorable approval before this body and that the said approval be forwarded to the full council. Well, that the amendment be, I guess and we're we'll just approving ahead. the amendment. Just approving the amendment at right. this time. I would move that we do that. Second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, any questions, Major Herman? No, ma'am. All right. Amendment number two, uh, rules committee says, We've got several pieces of paper going on here. Um, Delete bylaws and insert rules of, rules of procedure. Of procedure. And from our law department, they said that looks fine. Can I? I, I don't know why we want to. It doesn't make any difference. I'm fine with that. Right. That was my question. But okay. Can I get a, a motion to? Yes. So moved. So moved. Second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion's carry and approved. Amendment number three, page two, line 27, after adopt, delete bylaws, and after rules, delete and regulations, and insert of procedure. And the law office says, looks fine to them. Uh, make a, uh, can I hear a motion to approve that amendment as indicated? After adopt, delete bylaws. Uh, just a minute, Madam okay. Chair. Okay, take your time. I have to go take back to the original text. Take your time. Can't. I know. <laughs> but we need to have a copy with these amendments in there. So yeah, we don't. that's a little tough. Uh, that's what I'm looking for. Both the bylaws and regulations should be changed to of procedure. <coughs> that's the way it looks. line is that da, 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 da. this is impossible so basically I think what they're asking for is page 2 line 27 let me go back the board may adopt bylaws and rules and regulations as it deems necessary and desirable for the regulation and the conduct of its meetings and activities. They want to change the bylaws and the regulations to rules of procedure. The board may adopt rules of procedure. Fine. Um, no problem. Okay. So moved. Second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. Ayes have it. Okay, that's for amendment number three. Amendment number four, 
We have received information from our legal department to delete this amendment, and the amendment that they were looking for was? Madam Chair, I would, I, I would agree with that because, frankly, okay. I got confused when I read through it. Yes. We're talking about the council. It's the city the council. council. And right. why are they going to change this to name to a council? No, no. Uh, okay. And I will read quickly what the, um, uh, our law office indicates. City charger. City, the city charter at Article 4, Section 9 authorizes the city council to, quote, establish by ordinance automatic committees to facilitate the exercise of its legislative and other powers, unquote. In addition, quote, the charter at Article 6, Section 14 further states, the city of Annapolis shall have such boards, commissions, and committees as shall be appropriate for the proper functioning of the government for the government and for the efficient provision of municipal services, the designation of the body, the qualifications, and terms of its members, the powers and duties of the body, and its placement in the organizational structure of the city shall be specified by or ordinance, unquote. Furthermore, Chapter 2.48 provides for, quote, boards, commissions, and committees, unquote, and delineates and references to numerous boards, committees, and commissions. The only mention of the word council, quote, in the charter and code is in reference to, quote, the city council. Based on the above, using the term board, committee, or commission would be appropriate within the express authority of the city council and enacting an ordinance establishing a body. Use of the term council and this ordinance is beyond that which is expressly authorized by the charter and code and is likely to be confused with references to, quote, city council, unquote. All right. Can I get a motion uh, to delete, to delete amendment. the amendment number four? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Okay, and we have amendment number five, and the law office is indicated to delete this amendment. The language is superfluous and unnecessary because all ordinances are permanent unless the council takes affirmative action to rescind the law, whether through a sunset provision in the law itself or by rescinding the law after its enactment. Further Madam note. Chair, I totally agree with that. Okay. Before you go any farther. All right, I'm I just doing move, it for the. For I the, would move that it be deleted. Okay, and I just want to do it on the record. Um, no further that the language in Amendment 5 says the council may take affirmative action to rescind the otherwise permanent ordinance. The language would invert, inadvertently allow the resulting council body rather than the city council to rescind the otherwise permanent ordinance. This is an example of how using the word council in Amendment 4 discussed above has the unintended consequence of creating confusion between city council and proposed a council. Second the amendment. Second the deletion of for Amendment number 5. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? The eyes have it. Aren't you uh, glad he came in tonight? <laughs> yes. Thank you, Major Herman. Anyway, all righty. Any questions or comments, Major Herman? And we'll get that to you, and our, our Chief Baker can, can um, move forward from there. At this time, since Alderman Payon is not feeling well, I'll dispense with not giving the good info. I have and some good news. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Absol absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Payon. To keep me on track. All right. At this time, I would entertain a motion that we approve this legislation with amendments that I, we I, that we give a favorable approval for this by and that the approval be forwarded to the full council. I, I, I so moved. So moved. Second. Madam All in Chair, favor. I think that discussion. I hope discussion. Uh, I, I don't even know that it's necessary. I mean, I think the police chief has a right to. You know, set up an advisory council if he 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 or she wants to. Frankly, I think I think uh, Director David Gerald would have the authority to set up a public works advisory council if he wanted to. I'm I'm glad that they've gone to the council for our approval, mm -hmm. but I, I don't really think it's even necessary. But I understand it's there's at least a little bit of controversy in in some communities in in the city and. You know, I think it's not inappropriate for us to review it, but I think he can pretty much do whatever he wants. It's as a result of, I think, the uh, subcommittee that I chaired uh, last term with regard to looking into internal operations of the police department and seeing if they, there were any inherent uh, uh, racial differentiations in the way complaints against officers were filed. And, one of the recommendations we made is a police council of, or police uh, advisory board of some kind be formed. Now, 
I note it specifically says it won't deal with officer complaints. That's because it can't deal right. legally exactly. under state law until everybody, now if everybody on the committee were trained and gone through the training program, they could theoretically do that. I don't see 10 people ever, ever going through the training, uh, but it might, you know, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. I think this is just a committee that the chief would like to have. <coughs> um, doesn't really have much authority, may not have any authority, but I think it's good to have a group that he can sit around and talk with and get some ideas from. And I, I, if I'm not mistaken, that's really what we're doing here, I exactly. think. Yes. And I think it's a good idea. Ditto. I agree. Thank I mean, you. no, I don't think that the chief needed to come before us, but I think it shows a lot of goodwill and a lot of leadership um, to do that. Um, and I think it bodes well toward the community as well to let them know that we're all looking at this and we're all trying to make it all work even better. So any other yep. comments or discussion? No, I, I strongly urge us to approve and I, I'll urge the council as a whole to approve at okay. the appropriate time. And is that a motion? It is. And I second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion's carried. Thank you for your contributions <laughs> Thank tonight. You. Thank you. Your presence is well worth it. That's right. <laughs> the chief apologizes for not being here. He had a medical uh, issue. That's I okay. Think. Not a problem. He sent send a great person along in his stead. Oh, Appreciate it. I almost apologize for being here the way I am right now. <laughs> That's but. okay. Just leave it over there. <laughs> but anyway, I, I want to, um, oh, we've, we've moved. Every, okay. I just want to make a, a one quick announcement, uh, and uh, please indulge me, Alderman Payon. Yes, Last year around this time, the um, Anne Arundel County uh, went and um, solicited a grant um, for violence prevention, and they were awarded the grant. Uh, it's a $700,000 plus grant uh, under the Office of the children, youth, and families under Dr. Pam Brown. Um, in the meantime, last summer, um, Ms. Patience Shank, who was a boy three um, resident, had forwarded something to Mike Keller. They were both on the Human Relations Commission, and which was information concerning a violence prevention office out in Oakland, California. Uh, I looked at it. I thought it was uh, something worth looking toward, and I had uh, forwarded it to uh, former Alderman Carl Snowden. Um, that was last June, and already the um, Office of uh, Prevention, Dr. Pam Brown's office, had already started moving ahead with their grant. They, in fact, had a meeting last summer down at uh, the Newtown 20 community, which I attended. There was discussion about the grant, but I wasn't quite sure where it was at at that point. Um, in November, I was notified that they were on their way. They had gotten the grant and they were in the planning stages, which that is due in the end of September to the federal government's uh, Department of Justice grant. Uh, Alderman Snowden and I uh, contacted the point of contact in Oakland, California, and things work in, in mysterious ways. The gentleman who helped us out is from Bethesda. Go figure. <laughs> anyway, it was very helpful. And so in the meantime, uh, Alderman Snowden and I had some preliminary discussions concerning an Office of Violence Prevention within the mayor's office. I've had a, a meeting with Dr. Brown. Um, I don't think the city was very involved in this originally because it's coming through a, a county office, but because the statistics that were used to get this grant was truly just Annapolis statistics that they used, um, we decided uh, that we would be intimately involved in this. Um, I've had a meeting with the mayor. I've had a meeting, like I said, with Ms. Dr. Brown. Uh, Mr. Snowden and I have met uh, as well. Uh, he asked that our law office draft up a piece of legislation to develop in our office, in the mayor's office, an Office of Community Development and Violence Prevention. Um, there's a draft out there, but what I'm in the process of doing is looking at what exactly the Department of Justice and what the county signed off on to make sure we tailor our office to what that grant says. Uh, we're looking to have at least one person uh, staffed in that office uh, to take a look at a lot of different things um, as far as what has gone on in the city as far as violence is concerned, but also looking at 
other aspects and components of what is going on in the city, how to make the city better. In fact, uh, Chief, um, Acting City Manager Chief uh, Stokes and I are meeting with the State's Attorney's Office on Thursday, I think it is, uh, and Chief Baker has been invited, I'm not sure if he can attend, to take a look over since 13, 14, 15, 16, and year 2017, to look at what the profiles of are of the perpetrators as well as the victims. Uh, in our homicides and our serious shootings. Because from there, we can carry on what the mission has been in the Eastport Working Together meetings. We're looking at what, what the families need, what the children need, and basically all that the students said over there that they really need is a mentor, someone to talk with, someone to, to help them just to listen and those types of things. So we're looking at even profiling the people that have suffered the violence in our communities to see where the resources should be. The person that we're looking at to possibly staff the Office of Community Development and Violence Prevention uh, would be a person who could coordinate a lot of the things that we want to do in the city, whether it's like, for instance, we have the, the art uh, exhibit, the photography exhibit downstairs. Uh, this person wouldn't be doing the work, but they at least would be coordinating what is going on, especially in our public housing communities and our low income housing communities in the city of Annapolis. So this is a really big deal. To add to this, Dr. Brown, I said, and I met for two hours last week, and um, she will, and I, she suggested, and I agreed, that she would the next three months for May, June, and July present to our public safety team. Uh, committee. She will also be presenting to the Caucus of African American Leaders um, monthly as well. Their planning period, like I said, is due the end of September, and after that is two years of implementation. But we want to work together with the county. Uh, everything doesn't stop at the city line, uh, but we do realize that we do have some some matters that we need to address here in the city, and the police department will be strategic partners in all of this. Um, Community policing will be a, a component that we want to really look at to move forward. Like I said, the person that I envision would be in this office wouldn't be running these things. They would be coordinating and acting as a point of contact for the different things we want to do in the different communities. I think the one Annapolis Eastport Working Together meetings since October have been extremely, extremely helpful in determining the, the residents have determined what's needed and coming back to us and we all being a part of it, the residents within public housing as well as the residents that live, that surround the public housing communities. And I think it has been extremely wonderful. Um, Ms. Wilborn has been very strategic in, in, in talking and listening. Uh, they have a new public safety um, officer over there, Ms. Sheila Ford. I met with her last week. She is wonderful. Um, so I think we've got a lot of things going that we have in place to proceed, and the most important thing is when anything, in any time you're trying to do something like this, it, it's financing and resources, and that seems to be something that we can, can parlay, but Dr. Brown even suggested that if we could come up, say for example, and this is just an example, if the city can come up with say $30,000, then, I mean, if the, then that would be a match for whatever, say, 30,000 uh, that the federal government has. So that was just an example she gave. But we can certainly ask more questions and, and get more information. Like I said, she'll be here for May, June, and July, and she'll be at the caucus meetings this month and, then, and the following months as well. So I'm excited about this. I didn't want to give all information until I could see some light at the end of the tunnel, for lack of a better word, because oftentimes we have these programs and initiatives and we announce them and then they fall apart. But I think at this point it's looking pretty good and, and I'm, I'm really thrilled that the county is going to be uh, working with us to, to stem the, the tide of violence as well as building up our communities here in the city of Annapolis. Alderman Payone, do you have any questions? Amen. Hallelujah. Major Herman? No, ma'am, no questions. I, Good. Uh, uh, informally, I mean, I'll email you just to get the dates, and get, just in case uh, Chief Baker can't make it, we'll make sure we have representation. Certainly, certainly. We'll be, our next meeting uh, is the first Monday of the month. So she'll be here for May, June, and July. The caucus meetings, I think, are the second Tuesday, 
but I can send you that information uh, um, for Mr. Snowden. So um, it's been a great partnership so far. Um, everybody's been wonderful. Um, w whenever you, 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 you go off on another partnership, you're always a little skittish, but the county, and, and I've known Dr. Brown for almost 15 years, so uh, I'm confident based on the meeting we had, we had some things that we had to discuss that she wasn't aware of from my end, that I wasn't aware of from her end, and was a great, great respectful conversation that we had to kind of get some things out of the way, understanding each other's um, what we have to offer to the table. So um, it, I'm, I'm really pleased that we can move forward on something that's tangible, you know, something that we can really, you know, stick our teeth in, that we can really help our communities. And like I said, when it comes to public safety, we're best assured when we look at the health, the education, being informed, healthy communities, and all those kinds of things, and, and inserting what our, our mayor is looking at, the arts, entertainment, and that sort of thing, and, and, and coming up with a holistic approach. It's just not about policing. It's all about looking at other things that we can offer. No, the school system is in the county, but the schools and the children we serve are in the city. The health department, the same. Um, so we have a great relationship with Dr. Alato, who is my big, big boss, and uh, Fran Phillips, who used to be my big, big boss when I was with the health department. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at a lot of great things. I think this partnership with the county, uh, with County Executive Shu at the helm, I think will, will, will bode well. And our mayor is totally on board to all this. And I've discussed it. We've had a discussion with him as well. Mr. Will Rowell is going to be, I think, the point person here for that. So thank you so very, 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 very much. Uh, and we'll stay in touch. All right. Okay. Madam Chairwoman. Yes. Can I get a motion to adjourn? Yes, you can. And I'll second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Nays. Approved. Meetings adjourned, and the time is 6.55 p.m. Thank you so very Good much. Good job. Thank you, thank you, thank Wait you. A